Good afternoon from Vaughan in Nova Scotia. Uh, I'm going to finish those teapots that I showed throwing the other day and then I showed putting them together. And this is the third day uh, and I'm now going to stencil remove them, which yesterday I spent all day applying stencils and painting them. So uh, here you go with the stencil removing, which is the fun part. So I'm just going to show you that now. All right. There you go, that's a good close up view. You can see it better than I can. So I've got a light shining just above so I can catch the edge of each piece of paper and it's really tricky to catch it. But These were sprayed for the third time this morning. So yesterday I sprayed them uh, during the afternoon and then basically I sprayed them again when I came back in the evening because basically it takes about three hours for the layers to dry. So I came back about uh, 7.30 in the evening and I put a third, a second coat on and then this morning I did the third coat. And I've shown you this technique before. But it's always pretty fascinating. Like I said, it's the reward for doing all the work. Because all of these pieces of paper have to be individually cut out to actually um, make the stencils. It's more of a masking technique. I think I'm going to move my lid. It's getting in the way. The lid still has to be trimmed. Sometimes there's a little thing that I'm going to, I can get rid of it now just to show you how easy it is, but there's a mark there. And the clay is so soft that all I have to do is do that, and that disappears. That's the paper making crease marks in the clay when you're applying it, because the clay is almost as soft as when you freshly throw it, when you have to apply the stencil. It's slip, so basically you need to be applying it fairly soft. Well, it's a liquid when you apply it over the surface, but the clay that you're applying it over should be fairly soft, all of my slip is a, a frit based slip so it can be applied to clay that's fairly dry but the problem with applying it dry is it actually makes the layer underneath bubble up sometimes so I can't do that. Been there and I've tried that. And there should be another one in there but I don't see it. If you poke and you can't see it you're gonna make a mistake so it's better not to poke. I can reposition the light a touch no, I don't know where it is. I'm going to leave that. No, there it is. The paper, it's paper. It's really thin. But I know how I do this, and over the years I've basically built up a, a memory, I guess, in my head of how I do these, and so I generally confine them. Occasionally one escapes, and it kind of ruins the piece because it goes through the firing and then you can't get it off without a chisel. Yeah, there should be another one in there too. Can't feel it. Sometimes you can feel it. I know it should be because of the spacing. It's probably a little bit lower. Yeah, there it is. Yes, the phone's ringing. I'll let my wife get it. So basically, this now has to sit for about two days to firm up because I still have to trim it. And trimming once you've painted a surface is really hard because you don't want to make any marks on this whatsoever. I 
I have a giffing grip as I showed you the other day so I have to pad the giffing grip with a little bit of foam so that as it touches and holds the piece in place it doesn't actually mark the painting throwing is easy I mean I, I know that I make it look easy and it's really hard for beginners but basically you, you know after this many years the throwing is almost you know close my eyes maybe I know there's another one in here somewhere uh, just there maybe uh, but anyway the painting doesn't matter how many times I do it it just takes a long time all these pieces of paper like I said have to be cut up so I draw the shapes out cut the pieces of paper out and then I mask out with them and it takes a, t a long time but it's faster than painting each cat individually so that's why I do this and I can make sets that look good this teapot is for that lady I told you about the other day in the two videos back all right so that's that one let's put the lid back on I'm just going to undo this and take you into the kiln and I'm going to show you some pieces that came out of the kiln. There you go. This is what I have to stencil remove. I've got a whole pile of teapots there that I threw. And then there, underneath there's a few mugs just there plus my coffee. Um, and then I have another set of mugs just there. So I'll be stencil removing for quite a while. So let's walk you through the studio. Let's give you a dizzy spell. It's a bit of a mess at the moment. I'm actually planting all my seedlings. So over here, I'm growing all my seedlings to put in the garden. So my studio is turning into a greenhouse a little bit. And uh, I'll be taking a lot of them to the greenhouse. All right, I just thought these turned out kind of nice. This is what I showed you modeling the other day. So I think you can see these. It's looking really nice. There's a mug there too, but I think you can see the color of them. They're looking pretty good. The whales are having fun. So I painted very watery kind of look on the pieces. All right, okay. Thought that was worth a quick look. All right. This is Vaughan in Nova Scotia. I hope you uh, have a nice afternoon. It's raining again in Nova Scotia. All right, talk soon.